Betting Big, Strategies for Financial Planning, Payment Optimization and Compliance. Amazing, our incredible panel. We have Oliver De Bono, the CEO of Quantum Gaming. We have Arnold Karanja, the partner of Muenji and Karanja Co. Advocates. And we have John Camus, the founder of Bet Console Africa. This is our first panel. Guys, have fun. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lily. Thank you, Sigma. Thank you, everyone. So today, we're talking about betting big. Betting big, I mean, just a term, but... Uh, I want to focus a little bit on financial planning. As an operator and platform provider, we're new. We've literally just decided to enter the African market. Arnaud, we had a very brief conversation before. You brought some very interesting information. I'm going to kick off with you because what I want to understand, and I think what a lot of people here want to understand, is what to expect when entering. Now, I know Africa is not one market. Yeah. We have multiple jurisdictions, many jurisdictions, and very different jurisdictions. However, when we look at certain markets, like European markets, as an example, geos have very different approaches. So when you're planning to enter Germany, Netherlands, your taxation, VAT, everything changes. Do we have a similar setup in the larger geos here in Africa that people need to plan for certain financial requirements like VAT, like tax, uh, regulatory fees? What can we expect? Okay, um, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Um, I can see all of us watched Arsenal win last night and we slept pretty late, but uh, I'll try to be brief. Um, so, two things um, you, I'd, I'd advise everyone to consider. First, the timelines for financial planning. Um, do you go get a license in a territory or do you buy an existing company? Now, if you buy an existing, acquire an existing company, of course there's a due diligence. Can you limit it to a number of months? Um, what does that do to your financial planning? Um, if you want to acquire a license afresh, what, what requirements would be there? So those are the two things that I'd advise people to consider when coming into some territories in Africa. So what we do, I'm, I'm actually a lawyer who has handled transactions in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and Zambia. Um, and those are the things that we found to be the ch challenges. Do you acquire or do you apply for a new license? In terms of financial considerations, uh, of course, you need a very good tax advisor. I, I am not a tax expert. I feel like my colleague is a, is a better person when it comes to tax. But you, some of the mistakes we made initially, we've been in the industry for nine years, is that you go register for obligations that do not even apply to you. So at the end of the financial year, the taxman is expecting some returns. And uh, because you're used to doing transactions in a similar, betting is very different. So you need to factor in some of those tax taxes, the excise, the withholding tax, the corporate tax, um, uh, GGR, uh, um, gaming tax on GGR. So I would say there are many things to consider. Um, I don't know if I've worked with John. I don't know if, it, if there's anything I've left out and John. So, yeah, I think Arnold was going to pass it on to you, John. But just to go on to what you said, because you yeah. did say something really interesting, mm -hmm. especially in the, let's say, Curacao market. You know, it's become actually more financially feasible to buy an existing company because it's not so much about cost in regards to the actual financial amount. In today's market, if you're looking to launch right away, buying a company might cost you an additional 15, 20K over the license cost, but look at the time you save. Look at the additional losses, lawyer's fees, uh, let's say registration fees. Those things are not really about the financial amount, it's about the time, and, yes. and we know that time is money. So we've seen a very big uplift in, for example, the Curacao market where people tend to buy companies. Yes. It's very interesting that you're saying the same thing here in Africa because you know, that's, a, that's, that's a very good way in. If you've got a business with a big budget that does want to come in, I think that's such a good time saver. And you know, one thing I've realized, the longer you're waiting, the more you're burning in this industry. Salaries are not low your games platform fees are definitely not low. Yeah. So there's a lot. John, what's your, what's your take on that? What do you think is the way in? Which markets actually make it the most interesting to invest in today? Um, 
coming to your question, uh, all markets are different. I think I said yesterday, I was speaking yesterday here, and I said uh, Africa is not one big country. We are all different. Every geo is, has its own way. And um, uh, factors that you will now consider is, um, for example, you will go to countries where they are more online than offline, because uh, offline is capital intensive. Uh, it comes with issues of security, it comes with uh, now HR issues, uh, but then uh, there are also countries that are very offline and you can make good money. Um, you'll have also to check in terms of payment. Uh, countries that have good payments models, especially Kenya with M-Pesa, and M-Pesa is also going to, uh, it has gone now to Ethiopia, M-Pesa is also working in Tanzania, it's moving to other countries, and also Airtel has a similar thing. Uh, MTN also has a similar thing. So you do want to go to countries where uh, the internet penetration is good, mobile penetration is good, payment, uh, the MNOs are stable and the payments there are stable. Uh, these are the countries that you would want to go to. Also you have to check in terms of regulations, how do they keep changing their regulations? Because these will affect your future investment. You would want to go to a country where um, uh, in terms of the regulation, they are stable. They don't keep changing the rules, introducing new taxes, scrapping some, also uh, increasing the taxes. Um, and uh, I'll tell the operators that would want to invest in Kenya. There is a notion that is being uh, peddled around that taxes in Kenya are very high. That's actually what I wanted to ask about. So what is gaming tax in Kenya? So gaming tax uh, is 15% of your GGR. Um, and this is uh, corrected manually. Uh, we also have a withholding tax, which is tax on winnings. It's any amount that is above your winnings. So if you pay 1,000, win 2,500, they take 20% of the 1,500, because you can't win your own money. So anything on top, yes. So this is the, the, the customer's tax? Yes. Okay, so the GGR, uh, mm -hmm. the, the company, the entity, the casino, has the standardized game, gaming tax, yeah. and then the customer must pay an additional tax on his winnings, yes. deemed as income, similar to, let's say, um, some, some other regions around the world. The challenge that we are having with these taxes is, with gaming tax and withholding tax, uh, and uh, withholding tax and exercise are tax on punters. So whatever they were supposed to win, or whatever they were supposed to pay, when they're playing with exercise, 12.5. That being the case, I mean, how do the customers automatically get that amount deducted, I assume, from when they withdraw their winnings? That would be my assumption. For exercise, we take it when they're pressing the bet. For withholding, we are taking it when they're withdrawing. And you see, you reserve the money to now give it to the revenue authority. The challenge now, the other taxes is only gaming tax, which is charged on your G G uh, GGL. But the rest of the taxes are on punters. The only challenge we are having with this is because uh, uh, when it comes to of, uh, illegal gambling sites, they're having an upper hand in Kenya because if, if you are deducting withholding tax, exercise tax, then I stand to win more if I win on an illegal gambling site. So that is the challenge we're having. But in terms of taxes, I think they're bearable. Well, this is really interesting because this is one of the major factors across the European markets today. A lot of countries have come in, they have increased their taxes, and what happens is you eventually lead to an unregulated market. So, you know, at the end of the day, if a customer feels, oh, I can bet on this site, and I'm not gonna pay anything, then I'm gonna go there. So you, as the regulated company, end up suffering, you know, as a result of the unregulated market, but the customer wants to play there, but the difference being is that customer has no protection. Yes. So yes, that customer may lose all his money at the end of the day, not just his taxes. So that's Kenya. What about other jurisdictions? Are they following a very similar uh, tax protocol? So what we've realized is that um, over the past year, actually, um, we've seen regulators from Uganda and Zambia come to Kenya and see how practical it is um, and see and even do some research on are we collecting more based on the new taxes or are we collecting less? So those, I wouldn't be surprised if they implement some of the taxes but at a lower rate. Um, because what, what, what is happening in Kenya is that, you see, excise is remitted on a daily basis. Um, withholding is also remitted on a daily basis. So it helps the governments to have uh, some form of cash flow. As opposed to waiting for on the 20th of every month, they're getting this money on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Um, I would say, for example, our economy is yet to recover from the effects of COVID, um, and, and government is actu it's actually broke, so they need the money quickly. So I would say we should prepare ourselves in other territories for the introduction of these taxes as well. Well, this is exactly it. So, I mean, obviously, comparing to the international or the dot-com market, yes. it's very different. National regulation and, and, and let's say, the grey market regulation is, is very, very different. National regulation is always taxed at a higher level. So, at this point, I think what's happening, especially when you're coming to enter these markets, you have to take these costs into account. You have to take them into account that these are also taxes on your customers. So how do you work around that? I mean, are there scenarios where the brands, for example, offer customers additional bonuses to cover those taxes? Is that part of your marketing budget? So what I've seen uh, some players do, some uh, companies do, is that I know a company that increased the limited payout from a million Kenya shillings to five million shillings for the VIP clients. So the effect of this is that we know most players would want to stretch their limit. So that's how they are trying to recover from these uh, high taxes. And what they do with the small players, the smaller, can I call them retail players, is that now they have many promotional activities. I think I had uh, Cameron yesterday talk about people being offered goods. So there are many, like over Christmas there's a goods to be won. So there are many promotional activities on a day-to-day -day basis to try and appeal to more people to bet on the regulated um, sites as opposed to the unregulated ones. So those are some of the things that these players are doing currently. Well, this is really interesting because this is literally the kind of information I think many people need before they enter the market. Yeah. But then, you know, it's not just about the tax. Because we don't have that long, I definitely want to jump into the actual regula regulatory cost. So what about licenses? What are we looking at, for example, in Kenya? Let's use that as the example for an entity to be regulated. Obviously, in South Africa, you've got the manufacturer's license in, you know, in Malta, the MGA, Curaçao. You know, these are all running an average cost on the European markets anywhere between 40 and 60,000 euro. What can we expect within Kenya being the example as a license cost to establish yourself? Uh, so what we've done, um I, I said yesterday here, we are using a law that was uh, done in 1964, though we've, have, we've had amendments over time. And uh, the costings, especially coming to East Africa and Central Africa, is easy. The only challenge is the time of the application. And also, it's Africa, and you know how Africa works. So there is much of oiling hands, and that takes time. So a license, for example, a bookmaker license in Kenya, the government fees is around $10,000. But it could cost you five, six times more. For getting a casino license is around um, uh, $80,000, but could cost you twice. But then uh, it's good to work with uh, raw farms, ex especially uh, raw farms that have vast knowledge on gaming. Uh, the purposes of this raw farm is to make friends for you and to make the processes easier. You'd want also to have native directorship in that country. The taxes will be easier for you. They will be easier for them to maneuver as well because um, having local directors will be of much, of, uh, much assistance, especially on taxes and, and now moving around. But also you can uh, opt to go and buy an existing company uh, preferably one that has never operated so that you don't, it doesn't come with liabilities, do your due diligence, and you're good to go. But it's preferably easy to buy an existing one, and the figures are anywhere with, within 100,000 to 200,000. Within that amount, you got yourself a casino, you got yourself a bookmaker's license. So those are the fees. So I wanted to add uh, something to what John has said. So the beauty with the can I call it the African market, is that we learn from the mistakes of others. So this, the gaming bill that was being introduced in the country, I think five years ago, um, had some crazy charges of getting a license. I think we're talking of uh, 30 million shillings for a bookmaker's license. And what happened is that in Ghana, they had done the same thing. They decided, to, I think there's some operators here who've been in Ghana West or in Ghana, whereby they increased the prices at a very crazy rate. And of course, you saw many people exiting the market. So Kenya, having learned from Ghana, they actually made a conscious decision of more or less retaining the current fees as, 
as was passed in the in the in the 60s because they, they know that if you do this we'll have big players exiting already there are some big players exiting the market because of the tax section then i know because of that also they are trying to reduce corporate tax i think philip will handle that when he comes uh, onto the panel because they now know taxation is not necessarily the way to go uh, and, and generate uh, revenues as, 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 as governments would want. So, yes, I'm happy that we learn from each other um, as, as countries. You know, this is, this is really the information that we, we, we need to hear because I think what happens in these cases, and we've seen a big influx globally, it, it's not just Africa, when the fees go up, what generally happens is the unregulated market grows, and then there is no taxation on the un unreg unregulated market. So, you know, from an operator's standpoint, it's really important to look at these fees. We need to forecast these fees before we even get to technology or anything of that nature. Look, unfortunately, we've very quickly run out of time, and I really found this interesting. But what I would say is if anyone is interested in learning more about setting up operations, about gaming taxes, these are the gentlemen you need to speak to after the panel. I want to say thank you to Sigma. I want to say thank you to the audience. Let's give them a warm hand. Thank you very much, everyone.